So in this video, we're going to do some problems dealing with um, logarithms and exponentials and integrals. First problem is the integral of sine x times e to the cosine x dx. Okay, so when we have these e's here, a lot of times a good strategy is to let u do a substitution and let u be the exponent on the e. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let u be cosine x, and I'm hoping for is that the derivative u is sitting around somewhere in the integral and things end up working out nicely. So in our case, du, derivative of cosine x is negative sine x, and then we get a dx. So if we look at this, we've already got our sine x sitting here, and the dx that fits, whoops, basically our du, we're just missing the negative. So when we do our substitution here, essentially what you're going to get is an integral, you're going to get a negative that we're missing, and you're just going to get e to the cosine x, that's e to the u, and then the sine x dx gives us, well, really the uh, du. Then we integrate e to the u, we get negative e to the u plus c, and then our answer needs to be in terms of x, not u, so we plug in u equals cosine x. So we end up with negative e to the cosine x plus c. So pretty straightforward once you get the substitution. Next problem, we're doing a definite integral, we're evaluating from 0 to 3, 4 to the negative x dx. So this one's a little bit trickier, we've got an exponential, if this was e to the negative x I'd feel comfortable going straight ahead, but that 4 gives me a little bit of trouble. So what I'm going to do is change the 4 to the negative x into something with base e. So I'm going to do a little bit of algebra before worrying about the calculus. So to do that, do 0 to 3. Instead, of, I'm going to do e to the natural log of 4 to the negative x. Now, e and natural log are inverses, so e to the natural log to the e to the natural log of 4 to the negative x is the same thing as 4 to the negative x. We're not changing anything here. Now, the reason I'd want to do that, I mean, it's looking more complicated, but the payoff is I have 4 to the negative x. This exponent I can bring out in front of the log. So I get e to the negative x times natural log of 4 dx. And now this looks like e raised to x multiplied by some constant. That constant's negative natural log 4. So now I can do a substitution. I can do u equals negative x natural log 4, the exponent of e. And then du is just negative natural log 4 dx. So it's x times the constant negative natural log 4. That's u. So the derivative is just negative natural log 4. And so when we work out our integral, we're going to have an integral. e to the negative x natural log 4 is just e to the u. Um, dx is going to be du divided by natural log 4. So we're going to get a du, and then we get a 1 over negative natural log 4 here. And then our bounds, this is x equals 0. So that's one bound. Well, then u is negative 0 times natural log 4. That's just 0, so bottom bound is 0. When x equals 3, u is negative 3, natural log of 4, which I could try and simplify with logs. I'm just going to leave like that and see if something nice happens. And now I just do my new definite integral in terms of u. So I get a negative 1 over natural log 4. And I get e to the u, I integrate e to the u, 0 to negative 3, natural log 4. So this comes out to negative 1 over natural log 4, um, e to the negative 3 natural log 4 minus e to the 0. And then we're going to get, let's see, we have a negative 1 over natural log 4, e to the negative 3 natural log 4. Now I'm going to bring this negative 3 up into an exponent. So I get e to the natural log of 4 to the negative 3 minus e to the 0 is 1. Note a common mistake here is to just assume, oh, I'm putting in a 0, that's going to be 0, but it's not 0, it's e to the 0, which is 1. And let's see, we'll get a negative 1 over natural log 4. Let's see, e to the natural log 4 to the negative 3 is just 4 to the negative 3. e and natural log are inverses, minus 1. So we end up with negative 1 over natural log 4. 4 to the negative 3 is 1 64th, 1 over 4 cubed, minus 1. That 1 I'm going to write as 64 64th, 
to match denominators. So I end up with negative 1 over natural log 4 times negative 63 over 64. This gives me 63 over 64 natural log 4. There is my answer. Next problem. Here we're going to do an integral of log base 2 of x over x dx. Now, when I have a log here that's got sort of a different base, so it's not a natural log, generally I'm going to try and convert to natural logs. Sort of like when we had the 4 to the negative x, we try to convert that as e to something. Now for logs, there's a rule that says basically if I have log base b, we'll say of a, I can convert that to natural logs as natural log a divided by natural log b. You could actually make these, natu these natural logs or logs base e, you can make that base anything as long as it's the same top and bottom. So in our case, I'm going to do some algebra before doing any calculus. Um, I'm going to rewrite this integral as, how about log, let's do it this way, log base 2x times 1 over x dx, just splitting up the log base 2x over x to make it more clear what I'm doing. And then the log base 2 of x is natural log x over natural log of 2 times 1 over x dx. Now when I do this integral, um, I'm going to pull the natural log 2 out. So 1 over natural log 2 times the integral of natural log x times 1 over x dx. This integral, I see my natural log of x, and then I see a 1 over x. Well, if you think about this, the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. And that suggests a substitution where let u be natural log of x, and then du is 1 over x dx. And if you look at this, what you get is 1 over natural log 2, natural log x is u, 1 over x times dx is du. So that's a simple enough integral. You get 1 over natural log 2 times integral of u is u squared over 2. You get a plus c. So we end up with 1 over natural log 2 times natural log x squared plus c. Let's write that 2 a little more nicely. So there would be an answer to that problem. Next one. Here we've got some trig floating around with a natural log. We have antiderivative of cotangent x times natural log of sine x dx. A um, couple things you could try. Um, maybe you let u equal sine x here. Um, so the thing inside of the natural log, hoping for something nice to happen. Well, then du is cosine x dx. And that doesn't immediately lead to anything. I have cotangent, not cosine. Um, so this, I don't know, doesn't seem to be working out. Maybe you could manipulate this and it might work out in a certain way. But what's going to be more natural here is let's try u to be natural log of sine x. Then du should be like 1 over sine x, except by the chain rule we have to multiply by the derivative of sine x, which is cosine x dx. If you think back to your trig, sine x over cosine x is tangent x. It's reciprocal, that is cosine x over sine x. That's cotangent x dx. And looking at our integral, that's very favorable. We have natural log sine x, that's u. And we have cotangent x dx, that's just du. So all we get is an integral of u du, which tells us we get a u squared over 2 plus c. And so what we end up with is natural log of sine x squared over 2 plus c. Last one. Um, another one, we have an antiderivative of secant squared x plus 1 over x plus tangent x dx. So looks maybe a little intimidating. We've got a secant and tangents and some fractions here. Um, one thing you can try and do with the fraction is let u be the denominator. So if I let u be x plus tangent x, what I'm hoping is that I get an integral that looks like 1 over u du, and that would give me a natural log of absolute value u. So let's see if that works out. du, derivative of x is 1. Derivative of tangent x is secant squared x dx. Well this, 1 plus secant squared x, that's what we have on top. I mean the terms are reversed, but same addition. So what you get here is an antiderivative, the x plus tangent x 
is a u on the bottom, and then secant squared x plus 1 dx, that's our du. So we did, in fact, get our antiderivative of 1 over u du. So you do your antiderivative, you get natural log absolute value u plus c. So you get natural log of u is just x plus tangent x plus c. And that's our answer for this question. So there we had just some problems doing logarithmic integrals and with some exponentials thrown in.